today I have brought you down to the beautiful Cobble Street known as Merton Street in the centre of Oxford. We have Merton College just there, University College just past these buildings um, and then some, a lot of this is owned by Corpus Christi with obviously Corpus Christi down the far end there. Now the reason I've brought you to Merton Street today is to have a look at a building, um, number four Merton Street, which is also known as Beam Hall. Now <coughs> Beam Hall is uh, an important place because it was the um, it was the office for a gentleman called Thomas Willis. A little plaque up there which we'll have a look at together in a second. Um, now the reason that Willis is important not only within Oxford but also the um, uh, within neurology um, and also he has a, a lot to do with very important people of the time. So a lot of people that are from Oxford will know about Thomas Willis or may have heard of Thomas Willis um, with the case of Anne Green. Um, now Anne Green is going to all be explained or the case of Anne Green is all going to be explained in a different video just specifically for Anne Green because it's a fantastic story. Now Willis was involved with another physician called um, Petty. So you had Willis and Petty. Now they were both um, involved in the dissection of Anne Green. Um, which happened at Chai Mei restaurant, which is just out on the high street. Um, I wanted to bring you down here today. Willis has um, a lot of links of very important people in the time. So um, Thomas Willis was in this building between 1621 and 1675. Oh, sorry, I've got the, uh, the uh, clock tower going off there. Um, now, Willis, um, during 1666, as we all know, was the Great Fire of London. At that time, Willis went to London to treat a gentleman called Gilbert Sheldon. Now, you'll know Gilbert Sheldon because he is the gentleman that the Sheldonian Theatre is named after. And the way that they all link up together is that Christopher Wren, the well-known architect who designed 10 Downing Street and I think St Paul's Cathedral, um, in fact, I think he, he designed half of London after the Great Fire. Now, um, Christopher Wren, he designed the Sheldonian Theatre, which is where uh, a lot of the students um, have their graduation ceremony in the centre of Oxford. Now, um, Christopher Wren also um, did some very important drawings for Willis. I'll try and get some of this information in um, as I go through. I'm going to be wearing a face mask due to the current climate, um, so I won't be able to speak whilst I'm in there, but I'll overlay um, some audio explaining about the, the works that um, Christopher Wren done for Willis and obviously a lot of Willis's... Um, finds within the medical um, in medical research and he coined a lot of um, in fact Willis found or or determined a lot of different neurological um, problems to, to modern day illnesses so I do believe that he found a certain type of diabetes um, he coined asthma or the, you know not the term asthma because I believe it was called um, Willis disease one or Willis disease 2. Um, it was one of the two ways round. Again, I'll put the information on in the correct way round as I go do the overlay. Um, but I'll flip it round, I'll show you the plaque, and then we'll have a wander through, and I'll show you not necessarily too much of Willis, but mainly of the building, but with some Willis involved. Because I, I believe Beam Hall was it's about a 14th or 15th century building. Um, there was a building on it before, um, but that obviously got knocked down. Um, and then this was built in, I think about the 15th century, about 1495 or something, so right on the, on the cusp of the two. Um, so yeah, I'll flip the, the camera on now and we'll have a wander through um, with a bit of history of the building and some of Willis's history. Um, yeah, okay, I hope you enjoy this video. As I said, Beam Hall is out on Merton Street. So to the right of me, which is to the east of Oxford, we've got um, Merton College on your right hand side a little bit further down where that sort of pinkish building is is University College or out the back of there is University College and then I do believe that's the stables Merton stables then we've got number four Beam Hall we do know a bit of history of next door number three but today we're concentrating on Willis's offices which were with inside Beam Hall I'll just wait for this this van to go past okay as you can see the road is beautifully cobbled. It is one of Oxford's finest cobbled streets. I don't know the date of the cobbles, but it is, um, if you're ever pregnant and you need a, a baby rattled out of you, this is a wonderful place to bring a pregnant lady in a car. Um, so let's have a look at the plaque together. As I said, Thomas Willis was in this 
um, house uh, between 1621 and 1675. He was a neurologist and Seldian professor of, neuro, uh, of natural philosophy, lived and worked here in 1657 to 1667. Okay, so he didn't, he wasn't here during 1621. Um, he was here during 1657 and 1667. Um, Beam Hall, formerly known as, Be as Beam Hall, named for Gilbert Le Beam, ninth chancellor of Oxford University, 1246, owner of an earlier building on this site. As I said, this building has been rebuilt, um, but this is the current, the current building. You can see from the outside um, that a lot of the bricks are not uniform, they are all different shapes and it adds to the character of the building. You can see here where there was an old arch, so the, the old windows looked like they were in an arch formation and now we've got these modern prison looking bars on the outside. Um, it looks as if the pointing has obviously been redone at some point because it's very uh, prominent. But as I said, you can see that there was no um, uniform bricks used back then it was literally what you could get your hands on we've got these wall ties in now a wall tie um, would tend to have been put in after the building um, to stop the walls from bowing outwards um, I'm not sure if they were ever put in an original building you would have thought they would have just allowed for that within the main building structure uh, this looks like a reasonably original window um, what I always like about these is a lot of the chisel marks that they, they've left in. You can see the, the pitting on the stone, uh, especially around the lintel at the top. It's absolutely beautiful. Bit more uniformed up the center. Again, it doesn't look like original glass because it's far too uniform to be original glass. We have one more window down here. It's very similar to the last one, so I won't spend too much time on it. But again, you can see more of the pointing as we go over. Right, we now have a wander inside. Um, I'm going to put my mask on. Hopefully you can hear some of the stuff that I'm saying. Right, so again, this door doesn't seem very old. It's very... Uh, sorry if the audio has changed. We've come into a bit of a box room now. It's a bit um, echoing in here. Right, and I can't find a light switch. Oh, there's a light switch. Okay, so... Again, a bit featureless in here. It looks as if we've got some um, original bit of woodwork here. Um, some lovely sort of oak um, spindles. Um, we've got these fantastic um, short doors. Obviously doors weren't made full height of six foot six as they are now. I mean, this is, I'm five foot 10 and they're about five foot 10, these doors. So they're very, very small. Um, again, this is a staircase that goes down into the basement. I'm not sure. Oh, I've still got that open. Okay, I'll take you a little walk down there quickly. So we've got some very steep steps going down to the basement. A bit of the old woodwork there. Got a bit of an initial there, but I'm not sure whether that was the electrician or the uh, original um, workers. As you can see. The steps have been strengthened over time. You've got the original slope on the steps and then they've got new tops on them. Um, bit of a original beams look there and they they sit down on this lovely, lovely little stone plinth there. A couple of modern steps down the bottom. Obviously, a lot of the basements now are used for boiler rooms. You can see some of the original stonework out the back. Um, we've got a beautiful chest down here. Absolutely beautiful. The old travel travel chunk trunks, sorry, as it were. Oh, it says on the side when it was. Let's see if it hasn't gone. It just says it was railway, but that is beautifully constructed. Beautiful bit of wood. It's got these wood spines at the top, and then they're they're strengthened on the corners with a bit of steel, um, just to make it last. And seemingly, looks like it's lasted a long time. Um, now, there's not much to see down here. That wall's obviously been tanked out a little bit. And then we're coming down here. Um, we just have some boiler rooms. It doesn't do much. It's a lot of modern brickwork and round. So, there's not much to see down here, but I thought as we were here, we may as well make, 
the journey together. Right, so I'll come back up out of here. Again, we've got an office there, which is very small. That there, I believe, is a toilet. Yeah, so we've got a toilet there. Again, a lot of the original features you can't see now. Um, the staircases are beautifully ununiformed. Um, we've got this beautiful woodwork as we go up and the old lars and plaster plaster work. Okay. Now, as we go up, we've got another spiral staircase that goes up to our left, which is beautiful and original. And Tudor-esque um, woodwork that's on display. Lovely black with white plaster work. Okay, so this is one of the... Um, the rooms, these are just set up as bedrooms now. Um, you can see, this is the inside of one of the outside windows. And that is Merton College you can see on the outside. See the stonework on the inside is beautiful and perfect. Much better than the external stone. Again, got a bit more of the wood support or the frame of the building. It's lovely higgledy piggledy. Um, I believe in here, we have a kitchen, which again, is very nondescript as it were. We've got some original window shutters. And then, now, behind this door, I believe was Willis's offices. Now, I'm not allowed in there today because it is also, it is also a current professor's office. I have got some photographs, which I shall put on, um, where you can see one of the original fireplaces. We've checked out the tiles on this fireplace, um, which will probably be going across your screen right now. Um, and we believe that they're 16th century. So if anyone knows any different, please let me know in the comments. I'll put some photos on um, of in each individual tile so that you can see how beautiful they are even after all these years. I'm also going to show you just quickly some of the um, exposed beamwork on the roof or on the ceiling, um, which is all original and is obviously open plan. Um, and also some of this wood panelling, which we believe may have been from the original room we'll have to try and find some old photos to see if it corresponds or whether it's a, a sort of more modern paneling so i'm afraid we couldn't spend too long in there other than that it's, it is quite office like but there is these few features that i thought might well be worth looking at as we come away from um what i believe is willis's office we have this original door now this door Again, I don't have the exact date, but you can see it's wood with many, many rivets in. Um, obviously, some of this ironwork's probably been changed over the years. We've got a beautiful little iron handle. Now, that looks very ununiform, so it may well be original. I'll just take it off of its latch, so you can have a look at the back of the construction. It's just a little bit rougher. We've got these beautiful hinges well, in fact they look like modern hinges you can see where the original hinge would have been um, but now we've relied on these more modern hinges um, we've obviously installed one halfway down the door as well now this is a lovely little feature that is so it can close on the step now being that that is a slight step up i'm probably in beam hall at the moment but would probably going up that step be in number three. Um, so I open this door back up, and we will have a little a little wander upstairs. So there isn't much up here. So like as I said, this is number three, and I think it just goes into a bathroom. But again, some beautiful stonework around the window, but not much in. Uh, historic things to look at so i'm now going back up i'm now back in beam hall and we've got this beautiful as i say woodwork exposed woodwork as we go up the stairs um and we now will be going into what would be the roof space and then we come out now we have an office on our left um and more offices on our right i won't go into them because they're currently occupied uh, again, you can see more of the original woodwork up there. Some of it's now being painted blue. But that is the main part of the house. 
now at the back of Beam Hall, um, again, there's not much um, historically, um, aesthetically pleasing to look at, but there is some original um, brickwork, as you can see. So as I said before, that the um, you can see the pointing has obviously been redone, not to the best um, of their abilities, I don't believe. It, it's nice and flat, but it doesn't really tie in with all this old stone. As you can see, that a lot of the pointing is actually higher than the original stone. So it makes it look a bit more a bit more normal red brick like rather than uh, a classic old stone building um, as you can see here we've got one of the original windows um, and again we've got these chisel marks that now to think that these chisel marks um, or pot marks were made 400 years ago um, it, it's just phenomenal really um, just how long some things last um, you know you can have something for 50 years and it crumble or you can make something that lasts 400 years um, we have got a red brick building which as we walked up the stairs, and I said we were going over to number three, I believe that those offices were actually in that building as opposed to Beam Hall, which finishes just here. Um, there isn't much. I mean, you can, I don't know if you can see that up there. That, that window's quite ununiform. It actually sits back on, on quite a bit of an angle. It's probably about a 15 degree angle as it goes back. Um, and again, as we take a wander over here, you can see just up there, just how many chisel marks there are. I mean, it almost looks as if if that lintel there was made in two, which doesn't really make sense because the whole strength of a lintel is that it's made in one and, it, and it's load-bearing. So having a split down the centre, as that one does, doesn't make it very load-bearing. Um, we've got beautiful, again, if you can see that there, a full window in a straight line. Uh, again, looks a bit more um, original, more so than this section here, which is obviously an extension. We didn't go in there because, again, that is an office, so we, we didn't want to um, tread on anyone's works because they tend to be filled up with um, with books and um, papers. Now, it's got a beautiful English garden, and it's a beautiful day to, to show you. I mean, I say beautiful. There's a lack of grass. Um, it's very dusty around there. Um, but I'll just take you over this way quickly because uh, you may have seen on another one of my videos, or you may well watch it after this video, but just out the back of Beam Hall, we have Kybol Street. Now, Kybol Street um, used to run all the way to Logic Lane. You, if you've watched my other videos, you know that Logic Lane um, had Kybol Street coming off of it, but it's now been overtaken by University College. So you, it's a dead end street now, so it only stops just up there. I think these are badminton courts or squash courts for University College. Now, this is Kybol Twitching. Kybold Twitching is where the prostitutes plied their trade. We're going to go in there today um, and do a bit of filming. So again, if you watch my video on Magpie Lane, um, which will be a fascinating little video. It won't be very long, but it's a fascinating little video. We're going to have a little look in there and, and see exactly um, what it's like. Because uh, many men would have frequented that building back in the day. Not me and Russell, mind you, but some, maybe it's some lesser men. I can't judge. But okay, well, I'm, I'm, I hope that you've um, enjoyed coming to Beam Hall today and having a little look around. I know it's not the, the most, as I said, aesthetically pleasing building, but it is historically important because it was where Willis um, had his offices. Um, again, I will try and find out some more information and try and overlay it. I don't always find out any more information. It depends. Um, but if I can, I'll put some more information on there. So thanks for coming with me today. Um, and thanks for coming and listening to a gentleman who was very important um, and as hopefully you would have seen through the video um, was was very important to medicine um, and also had many links as i say with christopher wren one of the main things that christopher wren done for willis is now willis wasn't necessarily the first person to describe this certain part or he wasn't necessarily have the the, the best description of it um, but what he did do is Willis got Christopher Wren to do the drawings for him of a certain part of the brain, which is now known as the Willis Circle. And it's a group of, uh, it's, it's a nerve that goes round in a circle at the base of your brain. Um, and it's a very important nerve. Now, because of obviously Christopher Wren's importance within, um, within history, medicine, art, architecture, um, it's, it's Willis's image and Willis's documentation of the Willis Circle that has stuck, hence it's got the name Willis Circle. Um, so yeah, so 
what what things teach you in life is it's not what you know, it's who you know. And Willis knew Christopher Wren. So quid's in for him because 400 years later, he's still regarded as a very important person within the um, um, neurology departments and history and medicine. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about him today as much as I did. Enjoy the rest of your day. Remember to stay safe. We're in the most unprecedented times of our age. So do the things that you love, but stay safe. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon.